Okay, thank you. So, we can start right now, okay. sir. Okay. Oh, okay, I can start, right? Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Um, we welcome you to another edition of the HISF um, scholarship um, exposition. Um, today, there will be demystifying Commonwealth shared scholarship application process. And um, I have with me two scholars who are currently recipients of, um, or who are recipients of this um, wonderful scholarship. Um, the first speaker is scholar Goshen David Mitiu while the second speaker for today is scholar Alaberry Hafsat. Um, yeah, so the events um, will, okay, let me just briefly state the outline of, of what we'll be covering today. So first, um, we will introduce the speakers, and um, after which the speakers will give us a brief insight into their scholarship journey. And afterwards, we will talk about everything, you know, Commonwealth shared scholarship. And then you we'll have time to the scholars will be able to, you know, receive questions and um, they will provide answers to these questions to the best of their knowledge. Um, yeah, so before we begin the session, I would like to introduce the speakers to us. Scholar Goshen is currently undergoing his master's studies in biotechnology. At, at the University of Nottingham in England. And as I said before, he's a recipient of the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. Scholar Goshen had his undergraduate degree in biochemistry at Caleb University, where he graduated as the overall best student um, with a CGP of 4.9 over five. In addition to be a Commonwealth Scholar, he has also won the iScholar Initiative Award and the Education USA Membership Award um, in both in 2021. Before he went for that to become a Commonwealth Shared um, Scholar in 2022. Scholar Goshen is a Christian and he is driven by the fact that unhealthy situations will not change if nothing is done about it. He's also passionate about driving science by using nascent te technologies and translating knowledge learned to address real-time problems. Um, um, currently, his research interest um, is at the intersection of medicine, therapeutics, uh, and um, predictive modeling. Um, on a light note, he enjoys listening to music, playing piano or drums, networking, social interactions. Um, I will also have the opportunity to introduce the second speaker in the person of scholar Alabere Hafsat. Scholar Alabere Hafsat is um, currently undergoing a master's in research program in parasite control at Aberry Switch University. Um, I hope I got the pronunciation right. <laughs> right. Um, she is also a recipient of the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. Um, 
she had uh, undergraduate studies in microbiology at the Federal University of Technology, Accra. What I'm currently seeing here is the best University of Technology, but I will refuse to say that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so she also graduated with first class and currently our research area um, lies at the intersection of antimicrobial resistance and drug discovery. An interesting thing about her again that I see that both speakers have, you know, is also been um, the recipient of the ISI scholarship and the Education USA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's quite, quite interesting. Shout out to ISI. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, as I've said before, the next thing on the agenda would be to let the speakers give us a brief um, insight um, to their um, scholarship journey, how they started, how they got um, initiated into, you know, getting scholarship, what was what intrigued you? Um, was it for the money or <laughs> for the knowledge? You know, yeah. Um, please call her uh, Absat, please. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. My scholarship journey started in 2019. And, okay, I was, that was when I knew I had to I put in some effort so that I could package my CV. I was in 400 level then. So when I got to 500 level in 2020, I started applying to some scholarships, like the Mandela Road Scholarship, the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship. But COVID came and everything turned out the way it was. So in 2020, I applied to so many scholarships where I got rejections in all of them. In 2021, I applied to up to 10 schools in the US for my PhD. I got rejections in all, but one school placed me on waiting list and it, that gave me a rejection. So I applied to several other scholarships like the MasterCard scholarship, different Erasmus programs, the Common master scholarship and then the common world shared scholarship i applied to up to eight common world shared scholarship and only one school nominated me okay thank you so much for the brief um uh, exposition on your scholarship journey um yeah scholar goshen please okay thank you very much for this opportunity um so my scholarship journey actually started in 2020 so i would say that um it's been like a all of experience for me though because i finished my undergrad in 2020 <laughs> so like during the covid i did my graduation like towards the late part of the year sometime around um, September, October, yeah. So I did my convocation. It was like a mixed, um, an hybrid way of convocating to like in person and online. So, you know, the COVID came with a lot of, you know, sad stories like that. But um, after graduating, you know, you have so many expectations as, you know, being the best student and all of that, you know, the, the, the um, what is it called now? the popular, you know, getting retained in the school and then starting a career in academics or something like that. So I was thinking in that direction, but somehow, like, it didn't play out well. I didn't hear anything from the school. And then I, because before getting into my, my university, that is Kelev University, I wanted to get a scholarship. Um, but then I could not get a scholarship because most of the scholarships in Nigeria are tailored towards um, people in the, in the federal school. And while I was in Caleb, I could not like apply for most of the scholarships like that I knew that were available. So, but then after I finished Caleb, somehow I stumbled on the MasterCard Foundation scholarship. That was the first scholarship I stumbled upon. 
because I remember that before getting into Caleb, I'd seen that particular scholarship before, and I found out that how I stood no chance because, like, obviously, I the the school that we listed for the Mastercard then were requiring you know you to have a BNC and stuff like that, which I didn't have that time, and um, I just had only my wire then, so like I knew that you stand no chance. So, but when I finished my undergrad, I felt like okay, yeah, I could shoot the Mastercard. And I did shoot at UBC, but sadly at the last stage they dropped me. <laughs> so like, well now when I look at it, I feel I, I when I look at what I put in like in the application package, I I knew that, bro, like <laughs> even you you won't select yourself right if you're on the admission um, committee. So so the Mastercard was like a rejection for me that year in 2020. So like what I did was I, I went for NYC. I went to NYC with a goal to, you know, actually build up myself, you know, because um, I wasn't really putting the first class thing in my head anymore. So I was like, okay, this first class thing, people are doing it. Okay, fine, you, you, you've gotten the first class and gotten a good grade, but what else can you show for it? <clears throat> so <clears throat> NYC, I took up a lot of leadership positions like in the CDS. Yeah, I did a lot of things basically in the CDS and, um, I was opportunity to, you know, also in um, work in a kind of research lab too. So I did a couple of things there too. And um, before going for NYC, I need to say that I had saw I had seen the high school application um, opening on all that. So I shot I shot at it before going for NYC in 2021. So the high scholar was actually the what's it called um, hope for me because like my the results for the high school had dropped like a few weeks after i started nyc in 2021 so like that was like the turning around for me i was like damn you can't do this like it gave me so much like the high school i said i say this anytime any day like they gave me that and to hold that scholarship is not just for people from public schools alone like people from private schools they can get it people from um, polytechnics could get it people from anywhere could get it it's just you as an individual, right? So like that was a really, really um, turning around for me. So I got a high scholar uh, in 2021. I got the education um, USA membership too in 2021 too. And then I, I kept on working on myself and I got to know about Chevening along the line, doing my NYS. I shot at Chevening, I shot at Common World. Still same 2021, I shot at some US schools too. I think about seven years ago, I applied to Shivening, applied to about seven universities for the Commonwealth Church Scholarships. I got shortlisted for a Shivening interview. It was one of the most interesting interviews I ever had, although I didn't like make it to the final selection. But like the the interview, I made like super connections from the interview because they really loved what I what I said. And somehow I felt like why I didn't get the Shivening was probably because of my experience. But that is another story for another day. But I got like like real connection that I may not be like able to say yeah. So it was like it was a great experience for me. Like and then the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, I was nominated nominated by two universities. Um then I was reserved for about two. And then um, I think one one didn't say anything until the last stage. I think they rejected me about two or so. So like it was like a great experience for me. And then for the US to like I got like to admit for the PhD, but I had to defy that because I really loved, you know, the Commonwealth family for some particular reasons. And um yeah, I am <laughs> in the UK studying biotechnology at the University of Nottingham. So Nottingham was basically like the first university on my radar list for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship for my particular course. So when it came, I just yeah, bingo, that is it. <laughs> so like that that's really that's my journey so far. It's been like it's been a roller coaster one. You're coming from a private school background and some people making, you know, the, the popular stereotypes in, in, in Nigeria that okay, um private school um students are like half baked and, and the likes. So like I really wanted to change that um perspective. And I and I know that I'm going to change that pers perspective because I believe that irregardless of irrespective of I know yeah there are good schools you know we have great public schools we have great private schools too 
but it still depends on the individual, right? We have so many people from federal schools that are not really doing well. So you can't really blame the federal school, you blame the individual. So you know, if what you're giving, what what your what, what your lecturers are giving you, what are you using it for? You know, so I'm really, really grateful to be here and um that has been my journey so far. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the detailed um, insights. Um, and as your last um, statements about private school, public school, I'm totally in support. You are the one leading the <coughs> leading our agenda. Okay. Um, yeah. So the next question here um, will be directed to Scholar Hauser. Um, yeah, so to my understanding, there are scholarships, other scholarships in, in, in the UK, Chivnin, there's also, I think, the, the Commonwealth Masters, that is different from the Commonwealth Shed, right? And maybe a couple of other scholarships too, right? But why study in the UK? Why, why, why did you, do you even think it is worthy to, to study in the UK, um, based on your experience um, so far? First of all, I would like to advance my study beyond the undergraduate level. And studying in Nigeria is, it can be quite limiting. Since I've gotten here, I've been exposed to so many techniques and skills. You know, even if you just have an idea, the lecturers are always willing to listen to you. If it makes sense or not, they're willing, they're always there to help you out. So I decided to study in the UK in order to get an advanced knowledge of my program and also to be exposed to so much skills and technologies needed. That's basically okay. Thank you. studying in the UK. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Scholar Goshen. So yeah, for me, um, just like Hafsa said, you know, it's a different ball game here. You know, in terms of um, experience, in terms of cutting edge techniques, in terms of research. You know, and then. Um, it is very obvious, right? Like UK has one of the best educational system globally. I mean, like number one best university is Oxford from the UK, right? <laughs> so like it, um, we have a proven track record of, you know, maintaining the educational standard, you know, home and away. And um, aside even the fact that you're gonna get a very good um, degree or a very good exposure, the international experience is, is a whole different thing. You don't just get to learn academics or book in, in quotes. You tend to learn transferable skills, you know, how to work as a team, you know, how to, you know, manage time. You know, it's like so different from the way things are structured in um back home in Nigeria. You know, I know we are really doing a lot in Nigeria and um we're definitely gonna get there. But you know you want to leverage you know the best. So me coming to the UK one was because what I wanted to get, you know, in terms of hands-on experience and hands-on technique, I probably could not get it in Nigeria. And then two, um, Commonwealth, right? Like they are, uh, you know, looking for potentials, like me, like you, like any other person that is gonna apply, looking for potentials that, you know, are ready to make change in their country it's not just about yourself now it's about um the world at large when, sometimes when you i tell people this many times like yeah so many things are not working well in nigeria but then we can't keep complaining about the problem or what are you doing in, in, your, in your own little space to address that problem so and this is this is what common world is looking for in people in applicants like what do you want what, they want to see your ideas lift off the papers you know when you're writing your essays, you know, and that was one of the reasons why I applied because Commonwealth was ready to hold my hand and you know just sponsor me through heart and for me to you know impact 
um, the change I want to see in, in my country. So one was the hands-on experience, two was the sponsorship, three, the international exposure, um, which will come along with the education year. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so we've um, talked about um, your motivation for studying in the UK. Uh, now we'll be more focused on the Commonwealth Share Scholarship. Um, so what is this Commonwealth Scholarship all about? What is the focus? Um, what are the benefits of being a Commonwealth Shared Scholar? Um, yeah, could you please um, tell our viewers? Um, scholar Goshen, could you go first? Thank sure. You. Thank you very much. Um, so the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, basically, um, it's a scholarship yeah, that um, is big on sustainable development goals, um, addressing them in your whole, in your, in your respective interests. I tell people that, you know, irrespective of what you studied in Nigeria, you can always fit in your, your interest in one of their themes. So the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, they have about, I think, six themes. Um, yeah. So they have about six themes, you know, where <clears throat> each of all these courses, you, you can actually align them to one of these things. So the, the, sorry, the goal is to um, actually get people, get potentials, to actually train them in UK schools, obviously, such that you know after the um, completion of their courses, they are able to <clears throat> influence the change they want to see in their country. You know, transferring the skills learned, transferring the knowledge gained, practically into influencing policies. You know, research wise and what have you. So basically, um, the Commonwealth Share Scholarship covers everything you can actually think of. It's a fully funded scholarship. Um, you have to get a degree here in the UK. You have to apply, obviously, on their website, apply to the university. Um, you have to select. You can, I mean, it doesn't limit you to the number of applications you can make. You can make you know, as many applications as you want to, as long as you can tailor your research to all the applications, all the applications you're making. You can tell all your research, you can write your essays for, you know, because you're going to be writing some number of essays, right? So you want to make sure that you you, you tell all each, you submit a good essay. You don't want to submit an Arabic, Arabic essay. You, know, you want to tell all each um, course or each, you know, university you're applying to. You, you want to tell all, you know, your experience to match this. Um, so, yeah, like, um, basically, um, that is like a brief, you know, overview of what the Commonwealth Share Scholarship is. I don't know if my colleague wants to add one or two things and then maybe I could jump on again. Yeah, you basically mentioned everything. The Commonwealth Share Scholarship is basically focused towards um, high achieving students. Probably not only the first class students, it's also open to second class students. They're not, they not only looking at um, academic excellence, they are also looking at um, the volunteering and leadership experience. Do you have motivation to create an impact in your own country? Well, even if you even if you want to change field, like you need to tailor your essays to the development themes. Just as Goshen has said, you don't necessarily need to further your um, your education in the a graduate degree, you can actually change field. So far, you can choose a development team and then focus your essay on it. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So it is. It is not necessarily a must for me to pursue a graduate program that directly relates to to my undergraduate program, right? Yeah, yeah, because um, sometimes people would say that I did biochemistry, for instance, and I'm not seeing biochemistry as a list of courses. I'm like, you know, you don't have to exactly see, you won't see exactly biochemistry there. You know, you could see something like, say, like maybe infection and immunity, you know, definitely yeah. if you did biochemistry, I've done something, you know, on immunology or something like that. So it's about you 
looking back, doing some kind of introspection, looking back, you know, what did I do in undergrad and what are those specific things I did inside the biochemistry modules or inside each of the all courses I took on about chemistry and looking at the pattern and see which one do does my interest fit into. For instance, I'm doing bio, biotechnology here, yeah, but I read biochemistry in undergrad. So it was not as family I was looking for MSc biochemistry, you know. Obviously I did some things on biotechnology in school, genetics engineering and all that. So I just felt like okay, yeah, this is something I want to do. And I can still relate some of the things and principles I did in biochemistry to what I'm doing in biotechnology. So People should not always be looking for the exact course they did in, you know, undergrad. For instance, if you did English, you don't be looking for English. Look for something like digital marketing or something, digital something like that. You know, be flexible about the courses and do your research, do some introspection, and look at them, and it's for you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so generally, what are the requirements um that you would need you know to apply to a school mm -hmm. in the uk um do i need to have gotten my nyc certificate um do i need to have uh, written um an english proficiency test um do i need gre you know and things things like that um scholar house arts okay so i like this question because one of the benefits of UK schools, like one of the benefits of applying to the UK is that most UK schools do not require the English proficiency test. Most of them waive the English proficiency test. Even Cambridge University waives English proficiency test. So the English proficiency test is not a barrier to apply to any school in the UK. And then in applying to schools in the UK, you need to check the specific requirements some can require, it is not only a first class, a 2 one can also apply to the school. And then once more, you don't, even if you don't have a background in the course you want to apply for, you need to think of something you're willing to link to your school. For example, let's say, okay, you studied biology, or uh, you studied a life science program in your undergraduate program. You might want to study computer as your master's program. In fact, you have so much to say about that because the world is going digital. There is AI in um, artificial intelligence in health and so much things. So for your school, you need to specifically check the requirements for the schools. But the basic requirements are from your undergraduate degree, transcripts. If you don't have um, an English language proficiency test, you can, well, for that, some schools waive it and some schools don't. In some schools, you need to submit a letter from your school attesting to the fact that your undergraduate program was taught and assessed in English. Well, some will just require you to submit your work results. And some will tell you that does not suffice. You need to, you need to submit an English language test. But most schools in the UK waive the English language test. But if you have it, you might want to submit it, probably to make yourself more competitive. So in, um, in, you need to check your program requirements specifically. It varies from school to school. So that's that's all I have to say. Yeah, Scholar Goshen, do you have anything mm -hmm. to add? Yeah, so just to add, like um, Scholar Hafsad has said, you know, um, if you're making a big shift like that in terms of career choice and all that from biology to computer, as she said, AI, predictive modeling and all that, you want to also show what you've done in that area. You know, you're making that big shift like mm -hmm. you, you want to, as if you're applying for Commonwealth, because Commonwealth might not give you that scholarship if you can't show that, okay. They need to see that you have actually done something, you know, in, in that space, you know, in the computer space or something like that, you know, that validates your interest, you know. If you're just saying that, oh, I, I want to change, why are you changing? What have you done, you know, in terms of uh, impacting in that area? So, yeah, but I know that, you know, people don't make that kind of big shift. In fact, I know someone that made a shift from zoology to neuroscience. <clears throat> so, like, it happens, yeah? So, like, no limitations, and I tell people, don't limit yourself. You know, if, if something is picking your interest, 
something piques your interest, I mean, do something in that area and um, always document it. And, you know, when the right time comes, put it, you know, in your application and definitely it will stand you out. And then about the um, applica uh, the application process, like in terms of English language proficiency tests, and yeah, I know that some schools are very stubborn in the UK, you know, uh, they would... Um, <clears throat> They would say, yeah, we know you were taught in English. Uh, we know, like, you're from Nigeria, but then we still need to see, <laughs> we still need to see your, um, we still need to see your TOEFL or heart. But, like, as 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 Kola has said, it's not all schools. A lot of schools, say, like, 95% of schools in the UK would waive that for you. Just very few schools would, um, <clears throat> would, like, still say, no, you need to submit that. Uh, but like there are a lot of schools in the UK too, so like don't really, if you feel like um, you don't really want to get write that exam and or you might want to check other schools, but like first of all, always put the, the always put the note that you were taught in English. You have um, your YA, you have um, um, a letter from the university stating that um, you can't. personally, I wrote TOEFL and I wrote TOEFL and GRE, but I never used it in. In you know, university, yeah, like even at University of Nottingham, Nottingham is like a Russell group of schools, like top ten in the UK. I think top ten, yeah. But I, I never, I never used um, TOEFL. I never used GRE. So GRE is out. GRE is not required by any university in the UK, basically. Um, so you don't need a GRE. Um, I think for most schools, you're fine with just a YA and um, um, maybe a letter from the university stating that. You just can't speak English. And obviously, you need your transcript um, for some universities, like my university. Yeah, they were asking for um, yeah, they were, yeah, they were asking for your transcript, but it, it's not like it's not like your official one. You can I think I just used my um uh, unofficial transcript. I don't know if after it has a different um yeah. my school did not even ask for official transcript. Yeah, my my university did not ask for exactly. transcripts. Exactly. So I, I used just my YA, I used um just my unofficial transcript, the one you can take from your department. In fact, like yeah. I didn't even have to pay for the transcript because they gave me while I was graduating or I went back to collect it so, from the department, so I didn't even have to pay anything. So, like, that was why I used. I just scanned it, and, and that was all. So, like, UK universities don't really, they, they, they don't hack. I don't think even Cambridge. I applied because I applied to, I applied to um, Imperial College and UCL. I just applied randomly, you know, just to see like what's up, and I got admitted. But like. The course, the course that got admitted was not being sponsored by Commonwealth, so I could not even go there. So, but I got admitted with just my unofficial transcript and with just my, I don't think I even used them to full there. I just, I was just giving it a shot and I got in. <laughs> I still have the admission, but I've turned it down. So, yeah, you don't really need um, um, your official transcript and um, to full for most for, um, schools in the UK. All right, thank you. I can see that some questions are rolling in, in the comment section. I would like to reiterate that um, um, at the end of the session, the scholars, the speakers will be um, taking, you know, I'll be answering your questions, right? So please stay tuned, um, stay with us till, till then. Thank you. Um, yeah, I noticed that there was no mention of um, statement of purpose. Do mm -hmm. Do not take statement of purpose at all. For oh yeah, they the do. Uh, they do. Like it's it's a. I mean, it's a popular uh, package to submit. You know, you need your statement of purpose. You need your CV. You need um, at least two recommendation letters from your referees. Okay. Uh, you need your unofficial transcript, and in some cases, say your. Yeah, not not so full. It's not really compulsory to full as it's not really compulsory, but then you need your YA, your YA or your or a letter from the university to see that you can speak English basically. So that that is like the common package for um UK universities. I don't know if I've said once or had something that yeah, that's basically like I said earlier, the applications for master's program in the UK is one of the easiest. I won't, well, maybe I shouldn't put it that way, but the reason why I said that is because even your recommendation letters, you can upload them yourself. So, I think I applied to up to seven schools and uploaded 
like up to five schools. I, I uploaded the recommendation letters myself. I only had to collect it from my referees and uploaded it myself. Unlike other schools in the US, I don't think any school in the US accepts that. So, <laughs> schools in the US accept that. So you I can think upload that your very good thing. Yeah. It's, it's a very good thing because like you get to just um get the ref the, the references from your referees. Yeah, you don't need to them. And always just um, replicate that in, in a number of schools and all that. You don't need to stop them and all that. And it's very, very, mm -hmm. I think it's very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and the personal statements are also quite straightforward. It's masters, it's not PhD. I yeah, would yeah. say personally, I've written about personal statements for US applications and UK applications, and I can see like there is a good difference between those two. Personal statements for UK applications is not quite complicated, like well, it's maybe because it's masters do, but it's not it's not quite complicated. You need to just focus on what you're doing, link your background with it, try to iterate your personal your career goals, your research experience, why you want to study that particular program. So it's not really complicated, unlike applying to schools in the in some other countries yeah and just to add like like for um i feel like the uk has this kind of bond with nigerians like soft bond in terms of education um <laughs> honestly i i really do feel that way like because of you, you could even see that from the commonwealth nations and all the partnership and all i, I attended i was opportunity to attend like a an event the commonwealth events here in the uk at london you know, and I was opportunity to really speak with some great men, like the um, um, coordinator for CIC itself, you know, the head of CIC. And, you know, I could just see this, the, like, I could see the zeal they have, like, in terms of partnership like, among Commonwealth countries. And I feel like the UK really, really, you know, puts, you know, old Nigerian scholars, like, in like, so much high regard, because, you know, Nigerian scholars have really gone ahead to do, like, great things, after you know the program here yeah, at the UK, as I've seen and heard, you know, so like they have this like soft spot for Nigerians, kind of. I, I don't know how to put it. And then they, they they kind of give you admission. Like it doesn't really take time after that. Like say like one two exactly. months. Exactly. You see, I applied to invest two months. I think two months it's a bit far. I applied to invest so much. Yes, I think I got my offer letter two weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, so like compared yeah. to like in the US where you have to, you know, crack not, crack this, crack that, you know, but yeah, like for you, once you, can, once you can look into the university website, as I tell people, look into the modules you're applying to and tell all your application and your experiences from your background and all that into the application, you would surely get the admission, right? You would surely get it. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, so... Do you pay application fees um, when applying to schools in the UK or is it free of charge? Yeah. So, um, well, okay. Okay. so for me, um, most universities actually in the UK don't, you know, request for application fee. But as I said, there are some um, adamant universities like my school, my school is part of them. <laughs> My school is very adamant. You must, there's no waiver for it. I think it's about 75 pounds, a little bit cost. So you must pay. I feel like it's a way to screen out people that are not serious. Maybe that's that's why I look at it. Because a lot of schools, I think I, I applied to like, as I told you, I applied to like seven universities and like I never paid any application fee, even for UCL. They waived it for me because I was applying to come out. But like my school said, you must pay. So like I feel like it's just like a minority of them that would ask for application fee, but like the majority of them would not ask for application fee. Yeah, would not ask for, for it. So like the schools that would ask for it, like maybe like top schools and stop on schools like that, they want to see those that are really you know because you know you could apply to the school and just waste the admission panelist time. You're not coming there, you're just applying. 
<laughs> you know, right? So they, they really want to see that, okay, this person is really, really serious. So when investing our time to read is our application, and we know that, okay, this person wants to come. So it's, it's like a commitment, you know, in, in, in aspect of, you know, reviewing. Because I got to know, like, you know, sometimes when you're in the system, you get to know how things are done, like when you're outside. So I got to know, like, how the review, the reviewing process takes place, you know, in the department, you know, staff from the department will have to check the SOPs, check the CVs, and, you know, this takes time, you know, because obviously they are lecturing and and all that stuff too. So, like, probably in terms of compensation, so you don't want to, you know, you, and the, the school will not want a situation whereby, you know, we're just reviewing applications and, and at the end they're, they're not coming, you know, time time has been spent and all that, so how can we make, it, make up for it? So, you know, time is money, yeah. So that, that is the way I, I see it, though. So, but, like, Majority of the schools, like, however, would not ask for for application fee. Um, scholar, oh. outside, you have yeah, you mentioned it. Oh, majority of schools in the UK don't ask for application fees, except the top schools. So, if you'll be applying to these UK schools for common road applications, I would strongly advise that. <laughs> If you see a school that requests for application fee, it might be a way to apply to the school after applying for your common word scholarship because so many people might not apply to the school because of the application fees. So it might be less competitive than those schools that are not applying to, to those schools that... Um, okay, for example, these schools have um, a limited number of candidates they can nominate for common word scholarship. So in choosing your universities as well, you can don't choose them um, only the top schools. You can spread your schools. You can well for common worship scholarship, you can apply to as many applications. You can make so many applications as long as you're interested in the program. So you need to spread your schools. Don't apply to top schools only. You can apply to those schools that also request for application fees if you have the money to pay for it. It's because it is a way of, I feel it to be less competitive than those schools that do not require application fees. Okay. Um, I hope our listeners are taking notes. Um, yeah, moving away from the general um, application process for UK schools, um, we'd like to provide, uh, we like our um, speakers to give us a brief overview of the application process for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship itself. Um, what are the requirements? Are there essays to write? Are there some other requirements that they ask that um, are different from, you know, the actual requirements to, to apply to a school in the UK? Um, just give us a brief overview and we will talk about each of them in detail. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I would let you guys sort out who would go first. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Anyone? I'm um, okay. Okay, I'll just go first. Okay, okay for Commonwealth Scholarship, Commonwealth Scholarship is looking for different criteria. Number one, we have the academic excellence, the leadership experience, the volunteering experience, your awards. Um, are you motivated? Do you have um, an idea what development issues do you have? Do you want to address in your own country? So for Commonwealth Shared, Schol for Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, um, you have the opportunity to apply, to put in so many applications you need to apply under the different development teams. There are six development teams which have different programs under them. So you need to apply through those development teams and provide the name of the course and the university you want to apply to. So um, if you have a 2 one, you don't need to limit yourself. It's not only meant for first class students. So far you have a leadership experience and volunteering experience you want to you have to package and then i think we will break down the essays later on for common shared scholarship as well i would advise that because 
there's a place that you need to include your awards, your your publications, experience, and all. So I would advise that you shouldn't leave out the smallest achievements you have. If you are the type that only has, um, if you are the type that it is only academic excellence you are carrying about, it's only first class you have. And with that first class, you are the, um, you were placed on dean list from 100 level to 500 level. I think in my school, we have a letter every semester. If you are placed on dean list, so you can iterate that in your award as well. So um, even, okay, for those that don't even have that academic excellence, just think of anything you've done at all that you've been recognized. Is it your certifications or anything? Just iterate them, list them in that number of awards. And then your publications as well. Your undergraduate research is an experience. Even if it has not been published, you need to include it there. You can put it there that it is in manuscript. So anything you are preparing, if you have an idea already, you can put it there. That is, if you don't have any publication, don't limit yourself and don't leave the space empty. You need to think of something, even if it is the idea you have, just put it there and put it in manuscript. So that is what I would advise. Don't leave it there and don't limit yourself because you don't have a publication. Okay, so for the leadership and volunteering experience, thank God for NYSC in our life. We have to, we conduct um, <laughs> community development program during NYSC. So just think of anything, just think of anything, anything at all you've done, even if you have swept, and uh, during NYC, you have swept the compound. I remember there was a day they declared, they declared one day only coppers. We had to go and sweep the um, environment. I was like, what are we sweeping? So it is also a, it is also a volunteering experience. So you can include that in your, in your application as well. So don't limit yourself. Don't think you don't have anything to put there. And then I would also advise that you shouldn't be lazy to make it about the course of program you would be applying to because your Commonwealth application, I think, would be sent to the school you are applying to, the, to the program you are applying to. So make sure you make your research about the program you are applying to very well. Know what you want to study, know why you want to study it. And then I think that's just like, Goshen might have other things to add. You've really done a good job, Justice, to that. You know, you could say I was just nodding and smiling because you're just, it's, it's on spot. You know, like I always tell people, don't limit yourself. You know, um, I will start by saying that, like, yeah, it is a very competitive scholarship, but then at the same time, it is very transparent. I, I, I kid you not, there is no politics there. It puts your best foot forward, you're getting it. It's not like, I, I always tell people like I prefer the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship to even the Masters, the Commonwealth Masters. Mm -hmm. uh, before I even start talking, let me just say that this, what I'm saying, what I'll be saying, it's like my own personal experience. It's not as if it's the Commonwealth experience, right? So don't quote me as if I'm Commonwealth <laughs> myself, but I'm telling you this from my own experience. So like the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship is really, really transparent, like compared to the Masters. Like um, there is no like, I could have gotten it, but this person got it. Could there have been politics? You know, you know how people could think, you know, how, how things could play in, 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 you know, in Nigerian setting and how that, where there could be some level of bias and how that. There is no bias, you know, in terms of um, the Commonwealth Share Scholarship. Because as Af Afsad has said, um, you, irrespective of the fact that you, you're submitting a very, very strong essay, essays rather in, into the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship website portal. You also want to submit a very strong admission package to the universities you're applying to simultaneously or shortly after your application because these essays they are sending, these essays you are, you're, you're sending on the portal, Commonwealth portal, they're going to send it to the university. That, that is why it is called Commonwealth Shared. There's an affiliation or partnership between the universities, the host universities and Commonwealth itself. So it's the host universities that you're applying to that is going to nominate you, not FSB, not the Nigerian government, not some random NGOs. You know, it's the university. So, and these people have not seen you before, you know, in the university. So like, 
<laughs> they look at your essays, right? Like they see you through your essays. You know, they could tell what kind of person you are, you know, from your essays to your admission package. So I would say that, you know, um, submit great um, packages for both, both the um, essays you would um, turn in via the portal and the um, SOPs and the CVs you would turn into um, the university website. So I would just say that the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship is, um, the application process spans for like nine months on an average from a, from from point of application to when, when you get like your final, um, what's it called now, response from the um, scholarship scheme. So you, you, don't, you don't want to submit Africa application and now say you want to wait for positive news and then, I mean, nine months, pregnancy for nine months, like it's a whole lot, right? <laughs> Waiting for nine months and you're like not getting any good feedback, you, you know, you, you won't feel nice. So you want to really do the work now and um, wait and get pregnant for nine months and deliver your bouncing baby boy. <laughs> so like you apply now, the, the scholarship is ongoing now. So I think it will end the, this is the first part. The first part is your submitting your essays. I think they're about, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're about 12 to 13 essays or, or 11 to 13 essays. I'm not really sure now. Yeah. Uh, 11, right? 11, yeah. okay. So, so there, are, there are about 11 essays and these essays are divided into four parts, I guess. One section for the development impact part. They are split into different kind of questions and all that. Then another part for the study outline or proposed course of study or something like that. And another part for the career plan, career trajectory and all that. And another part for, I think, voluntary and leadership experience, sorry. So like it's divided into um, different parts like that. And um, when we delve into the essays proper, you would see that you, you have to be coherent from start to finish from, like you, ha you have to have one story basically from your development impacts to your um, leadership and volunteering. It, it has to resonate. You can't be talking um, A and talking Z here. Yeah. So after you turn in your um, essays, like um, after that said, the Commonwealth Share Scholarship is pretty straightforward. It's very straightforward because like when you go to the website, you click on Nigeria, it takes you to, it takes you to the portal. You see the different universities that have been partnered with for the particular year and, and the specific courses that you can apply to for that particular year. So you don't have to start saying, okay, which course can I apply to starting off? Or which, can, which course can I apply to for the University of Nottingham? Or which course can I apply to for um, Imperial College London. It is there on the portal. You would see it. So once you click on um, the um, after apply button, you choose the university you're applying to. You already know, for instance, if you chose, say, University of Nottingham Biotechnology, you would see it there. I don't think biotechnology is out this year, though, but you will see biotechnology there, for instance, and you know that, okay, the essays you're writing for has to, you know, tally, you know, somehow with the course you're writing for all your essays and all that. So um, as after that said, you impute all your awards, your publications. If you don't have publications, don't mind. Um, um, still put your undergraduate thesis or what have you there. I know people that have zero publications and got it same time I did, applied. This is my first time applying for the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. This is my first application ever, and I got it. So you can get it too without no publication. It is my first trial my first attempt and I got it. So I know people that also applied with publications, they got it. I know people that applied with publications and didn't get it. So like, public, it's a holistic package, right? You, you know, I tell people that shine your strengths and dim your weaknesses, right? You don't have to, if you, if you don't have publication, you don't have to rub it on your face that, oh, I don't have a publication, I, I can't get it. So like, mm -hmm. find your strength, like, if you have a first class, you have so many awards, shine that. If you have so many um, um, voluntary roles and all that, shine that in your essays. If you have an NGO or something, everybody cannot have everything. I don't have any NGO. I've not started anything. I've not um, um, founded a company. I've not co-founded a company. But like, it's my ideas that I'm shining. Shine your ideas. They have to be realistic, right? As we would discuss in the essays, you don't want to be sounding too ambiguous. They know that this is not possible. So, like, 
that balance, you need to strike the balance between um, what you are saying, what you have, what you're saying, and what you want to do in the future, right? You have to show it in strata in your essays as you write, as we'll discuss. So you, you, you put that, there's a section for that, there's a section for your referees. So like for, for the referees, you need to be careful because um, when you insert your referees and you submit, I don't think you can actually change them because although you're not submitting your referees at the point of application, but like if they see that, if they say that, okay, this person is a potential and, you know, after this, after the initial reading of your essays, they get to contact it to contact your referees to actually send their references, which we'll discuss later. So at that point, you can't say, oh, no, I've changed my referees. I, I want to use another person and all that. Although they can be exceptions, but you don't want to be in that kind of situation because scholars are going to be very tense then. Like, it was a very, very, my referees have not responded. My So you want to, you can remember how sad. So, <laughs> so like, you want to really, you want to really um, put someone, you know, okay, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, this person could write me. You don't want to say, okay, I want to change now because they could not respond to, they might not respond to you on time. So like, what would you do, right? You don't want to be that person that is an outlier in the whole application process, right? So like, there's a part for your referees. You put in your referees there, um, put in your awards, put in your publications there. Um, then you, you go straight to the, um, you select a team, you know, in the in the application form is where you would select your specific theme. You can always see the theme on the main application itself, like when you're choosing your courses. So you put in if, if it's strength and 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 systems, you put it there. If it's um um whatever inclusion, whatever education, you put it there. So like you select your theme. I think you can select up to three themes. Just make them kind of related, you know, just I think they mainly look at the first two. The third theme is not really important. So, so just make the themes kind of interrelated and then move to your essays, draft your essays. We'll discuss that soon. And then I think December December 13 is the deadline for this particular quote. So December 13, 4 p.m. GMT UK time is the deadline. They are not going to extend it. So like, <laughs> I remember last year I submitted my application like one day to the deadline. If you, I'm not saying you should do that, but like take your time, write your essays. You have enough, enough time write your essays, don't be the first to submit. Nobody's, they're not going to review your essays until after the deadline. So like, if you are the first to submit, it's not changing anything. Like, oh, I'm the first to submit, so I get to be considered first. Nothing like that. They are so fair. So they're going to start consideration when everybody has have submitted. So like, take your time and write your essays. Write it, check it, write it, check it. Nobody reviewed my essays. Nobody, I didn't send it to any scholar to review wow. my essay. I'm saying this year, I did it myself. You can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. If you get a scholar to review your essay, fine, beautiful. You know, it's good. Like they could hold your hand and show you the mistakes that they did, and it will help people. If you are, if you cannot get a scholar, don't feel bad. I don't know why sometimes people feel bad. Like um, this scholar, scholars, are, this scholar has gone, and now he or she is too proud to review no no don't feel don't feel bad like that you can actually do it yourself and get it. nobody reviewed my essays from start to finish and it's my first application and i got so you can do it too so how do you do you start writing from the first day of application you check it again because sometimes you can just be like just talking with your friend and you, an idea just pop up you just jot it down you go back and put it down you edit the essays again that is how to date you. Write your essays today. You sleep on it. You check it again. You be like, oh no, 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 no. I should have changed this. I should have used this word. I should have used this. Word. You attend webinars like this, and you get scholars talk, and you will be like, oh yeah, I should have said this thing like this. I should have done this like this. That's that's how to win applications. You read, you watch videos, you watch attend webinars like this, and you get to improve on yourself by yourself. So when you submit um, the application by this about twelve, I think. The following year, I can't really see the exact month, um, but you, you're gonna get um, if they review your essays, the, the um, scholars, scholarship boards, and all that reviewers, they review your essays, and like you are a good fit. They would now that particular point, either your universities, your, in some cases, your university will contact you that okay, um, we've sent because they would have sent your, your essays to the universities, obviously. So, university to your university will contact you that okay, we've sent your name as a nominated candidate for so and so, blah 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 blah. blah. Your the mail can come in two ways you could either be nominated by university or placed on reserve, right? But 
irrespective if you are nominated or reserved, the Commonwealth Scholarship is going to contact you for reference. They will send a mail to you asking you to tell your reference to send their references. Obviously, it has to be official references, letterhead, and maybe stamp and all that. So, but you don't need to be bothered about you know what your reference is going to write now. Be bothered about your essays. So, but at that particular time, they would contact you that okay, it's time for you to tell your reference to send your references to so and so mail. There's a specific mail ID there. Very straightforward. So you now will now contact the referees that, yeah, I've been nominated, yeah, have been reserved, please write me a, a reference to this. So for people that were nominated by one, two, three, four, five number of schools, um, you get different mails for different universities. And then you tell your referees to send um, um, the letters to, you know, um, to the designated mail ID. Yeah, so people that have more than one, um, um, nomination you can just alight because when the when the mail com, come in it's gonna come in with your CSE ID that is unique to you and all that so like you tell your reference that alight all that you know in the mail and send just one letter and all that you don't need to send five letters for five university so it's very nice like that so and then so from here from this point so so yeah when you send the reference then um um the, the universities will now probably send you some another mail, I think some months or some few weeks later or some months later saying that, okay, they've confirmed your um, um, nomination. So you should sign some forms. So at that point, this is where the miracle start happening. You know, people that were reserved, we be praying to God for people to, that were nominated by one at one school to, to, to drop, <laughs> to drop or select which one they want to pick. So at that point, obviously you can't go to all, all the universities you were nominated for. If you're nominated by one, obviously that is your go to school. But if you are nominated by one at one school, that is where you start making the game of choice. Which one should I go? Which one is aligning with my interest more and all that? So you pick one school and then you reject the others, obviously. Because as you're, you're signing the form that, okay, I accept. So you send the form back to your PO, your program officer. They will, they will tell the mail there. So when you send the form to your program officer, some few weeks later, they will contact you that, thank you for accepting um, um, the Commonwealth Church Scholarship at Tuan. So university, they will now attach your, I think, some other forms to fill for health and all that. If you submit, they now send your final award. Then you can now start cruising and waiting for it visa flight and all that to happen and then you find yourself to the UK. It's pretty, it's mentally draining, especially if you're applying for more than one university because writing the essays is no joke at all. If you're a Commonwealth scholar, you like, you really, really tried, you really, really deserve, it's a really, really rewarding experience. So like you want to do things right for now, this is a very, very critical um, part of the application. The most critical really, because if you've been contacted for referees, there's nothing that is stopping. If you've if you've been nominated for to submit your refuse, there's nothing that can stop you. If not even your village people, except <laughs> because I remember that some people referees failed to send it early, and they actually extended the deadline. I think by two weeks or one week. After can you remember? After two phase, mm -hmm. it was always in my DM that time. <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> so like. This is the most critical part. So make sure you like we're gonna discuss the essay soon. Make sure you like you put in a lot of energy in writing the essays. And after this, if you get nominated, forget it. We got you're getting it. Yeah. Okay. So, I would also like to add that. I was I would also like to add that some people are actually confused. Or which one should they do first? Should they apply to the school first or should they apply for the Commonwealth Scholarship first? Okay, I would advise that you apply for the Commonwealth Share Scholarship first because the scholarship deadline is December 11 or 9 or so. So you don't have enough time again. There's no time considering the essays you need to write and all. And then the deadline for the schools, it's I think some have their deadlines for like next year, June, July, and so. But then it is a good one to apply to your program immediately um, after applying for the scholarship. But that will still not stop you if your school decides to nominate you for like me. When I yeah. applied to the Commonwealth Shared Scholarships, I 
I apply to the schools, like the schools I'm most interested in. I did not even apply to my present school. So when mm. they nominated me, they mailed me that they've nominated me that I should go and apply to the program. So, but exactly. I would advise some schools might not have that. Some schools, like I know of someone that he applied to the school first though, and the school mailed him to apply for Commonwealth Search Scholarship. So I think different schools with different requirements, but I would specifically advise that you apply for the Commonwealth Search Scholarship first because of the deadline and then apply to your schools afterwards. Yeah, I, I, sorry to, to, to just cut out again. You know, people really need to, you know, I think it's a really good platform to put um, the right information out there. I also applied to your school too, I remember, and I was reserved. I was reserved. <laughs> so yeah, very true. Like I know that I would always say there are some other man schools. They, they are, there's always an hotline in each of every process, you know. So like um, Chester is one of them. Chester would say, you must just i would say you should do it simultaneously that um um the application that that, that that the application for this for the university admission closes the same day with with um the scholarship itself because i applied to chester too so they are very very stubborn you know <laughs> i'm so sorry to use the word stubborn though like they're pretty hard amount about i don't know if it has changed though like but i mean this is just my during my own experience as i've said so all what I'm saying is just based on my own experience. So what I would say to add to what Afshad has said is that um, most of the schools, as I would say, um, you can always apply, you know, after you've submitted your um, um, Commonwealth Share Scholarship application. And um, it even extends to, like, say, like, next year for a lot of schools. And even after you've even been nominated, some schools you say, okay, apply, 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 we'll give you the admission. So, but, like, for outliers, like, outlying outli outli schools, like University of Chester, if they are doing the same this year, <laughs> I would say that please check the university website and confirm if, because if when you check the university website, you would always see the scholarships that are available. Check Commonwealth page, check scholarship, and see if they are saying you should submit admission the same day Commonwealth is closing. So you won't be um, expecting something that you should not expect if you don't do the right thing. So but on, on, on average, um, you can always submit your application um, the following year. If you can do it simultaneously, brilliant. If you can do it after, brilliant. But just to be on the safe side, um, don't, don't, um, don't, um, what's it called? Don't work blindly. You're applying to the right thing to do, actually. You're applying to University of Nottingham. You should check the University of Nottingham website to even know the modules because you're going to use them in your essays, right? So doing that, you should even see what they are saying about the Commonwealth. Um, shared scholarship. So from there, you would even know that if um, you should submit by the deadline of Commonwealth or not. So I think that is one safe way to go for in case people on this call might want to apply to University of Chester. So just check the university website to confirm. And yeah, obviously you apply to more than one university. So like if Chester decides not to give you, you have other options. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, let's go into the detail of uh, um, the essays. And the first essay I'm seeing here is how your proposed study relates to development issues at the global, national, and local level. And how your proposed study also relates to development issues connected to your chosen Commonwealth shared um scheme or the theme and the wider sector i would like um, um, scholar goshen to um, briefly tell us about this um, this particular essay so yeah to to start with um i would say you know bear in mind that you know this is the first you don't want to turn off your review <laughs> with just the first uh, essay so like it's a, it tells it tells a lot of the impression where you had all that so i would say answer this question in the descending order they want to know like the, um what which um area you're looking into your interest and all that and the global threat you know global in the descending order from global to national to local yeah from what is happening in the world to what is happening in your country and what is happening in your locality that kind of thing so, like, pick a particular research interest, pick a particular area in your field. Don't be generic, please. Don't say, like, I'm looking at, you know, 
um, something big, like I'm looking at, I don't know, like I'm looking at just um, infectious diseases, like just talking about, you are not specific. Be specific, if, you are, if you're saying infectious disease, what type of infectious disease, you know, when you are talking globally, bring it to the national level, bring it to the local level, use statistics to back up your claim. For instance, if you're talking about cancer, I'll, I'll be using a lot of scientific, I mean, health related stuff because I'm in the health life sciences, so sorry. So but if you're talking about cancer, they are like um, um, recognized like um, stats that you can pull out from recognized um, pages like Lobocan. You can use stats from Lobocan to say what, to, to highlight what is happening in the world. Look at Lobocan, look at WHO, look at, you know, look at those, you know, recognized um, um, organizations or recognized, you know, websites where you could pull statistics out to back up your claim. It's very important to know that you know what you're doing, you know, something that they can check, you know. And then, very important, you, you have to bring in the sustainable development goal into play in this part of your um, essay, you know, development impact, you know, tie, tie the problem. I tell people that, you know, um, you know, sometimes like for we scholars, there are a lot of problems and problems are always arising, but it's good because we are solving them, right? Those problems that you are saying that you are looking, that you're facing in Nigeria, tell the problem, tell, just tell the problem in a, in your national, in a national level, in the local level, Related to what is happening in the, in the global level, related to one of the SDGs, there are about 17 SDGs, I think, and one will cut across the problem, would always fit in. So because they want to see that you are realistic and they want to see that because they are investing thousands of or millions of dollars into you. So like or pounds rather they want to like nobody wants to waste it our money they want they want someone that you know wants to do something that actually tallies with their vision so i would say write this essay in the descending order use statistics back it up with sdgs and um drop it there for them to read and that is it that is that is the best way to answer that i may not be able to share my essay specifically but like that is the way i answered like this particular part of the essay I started with like what was happening in the global level in terms of um, my area of interest. And then I studied what was happening in the national level in Nigeria. And I studied what was happening locally. And I used statistics and I backed it up with the SDG claim. And that was our answer this particular part of the essays. That sounds great. Um, the next, um, to the next essay, so we have, how do you intend to apply your new skills and qualification when you return home? Um, um, Scholar Hapsats, could you enlighten us on this particular essay? Yeah, for this particular section, I would advise you use um, two main steps. The first one is um, you need to iterate some of the skills you would be learning from your program. And these skills, don't just bring them out from your head. That is why we mentioned initially that you need to do your research. Go to your program website, go and check some of the skills the programs um, would be providing for you. And then I trade some of these skills. For example, if you would be studying um, epidemiology, you need to go and check the program website. They would have mentioned some of the epidemic technological tools and methods that you, you would be learning. Okay, so for this essay, you need to iterate some of those skills. After iterating the skills, then look out for some organizations in your home country that use the skills. For example, okay, um, if you want to mention a particular disease, for example, the epidemiological study of a particular disease, you are studying epidemiology. After checking some of the epidemiological tools and techniques you would be studying in your program, then let's say, for example, USAID, WHO, and stuff, and some of the organizations, they use those techniques. So you can mention that you would collaborate with these organizations to probably collaborate with USAID to create awareness on the disease and then or collaborate with um, probably WHO 
or some of those organizations, just mention those organizations like that, that uses those particular skills from your program. Don't bring skills from your head. Hmm? Make sure you do your research and or you can mention the skills. Like one of it is um, those epidemiological studies. You can say you want to collaborate with use it to create awareness campaign, some of the diagnostic methods. I'm sorry I'm in the health sector, so that is what I can cite as examples. Some of the diagnostic methods, you can say you would collaborate with World Health Organization, NAFDAQ, and stuff like that. So, you know, um, utilize those skills in the development of probably therapeutic approaches. Don't say you want to discover drug. You cannot discover drug with a master's study. You need to do PhD and stuff like that. So don't put elaborate um, <laughs> those kind of specific and just two points here, hundred words. Yeah. I trace your skills I mean, and mention yeah. the organizations that utilize these skills. And that is also just form your words around that. Exactly. Okay, thank you. I see Scholar House has just threw a subtle attack to us that want to change Nigeria. <gasps> okay. Um so the next essay um is um, what you expect will change in development terms following your studies, including the outcomes that you aim to achieve, the time frame for the implementation and who the beneficiaries will be. So, I mean, the things that you've proposed, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so how do you intend to achieve this time frame and the beneficiaries? That is another part of the essay we would like you to um, expand shit um, on. Thank you. Um, Scholar Goshen, please. Okay, thank you very much. So I will just um, continue from where Hafsad has said, because obviously these essays have to follow each other in a very coherent manner. So say you started from XYZ, XY diseases or XY disease as the case may be, you are not changing that throughout, you are sticking with that throughout your essay. So when you want to say the impact you want to see, you don't want to say you want to see an impact in another field or in another disease, that is a turn off. It shows that you are not sure what you want to do. Common world is not looking for people that are confused. They are looking for people that know what they want to do. They know it precisely. How do you want to do it? They are not looking for people that are thinking. Um, they are looking for people that are real. People, not people that are like um, saying things that that is not possible. They know when you are lying. They know when uh, this person, this person cannot. Do. They know what you're capable of doing with just your masters. <laughs> just like after that said, <laughs> you want to discover a drug. Yeah, well, it might be an exceptional student, yeah, but like, obviously, your master, just your masters. I mean, like, you cannot just discover a drug, or you want to discover a drug to treat. Ah, no, better, better than saying you want to discover a drug, you could say you would help. That sounds, you know, you're helping. So, like, you want to be real with yourself. You want to be real, but you don't want to sound stupid. You don't want to sound um confused at the same time they want people that are really so in terms of impact this is not the time to beat about beat around the bush you know taking them from you know in circles not you have to be specific you tell this in stories i you, you can use like three lines each for the impact you want to see use keyword terms like i expect to see exchange in so and so true blah 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 through conference, through workshops, through this and that. Maybe you are doing something in the girl child. You could say, I expect to see an increase or I expect to see a 70% increase in girl child awareness in so-and-so place, in so-and-so environment, specificity, right? You don't want to be vague. Where? Where do you want to see the change? And then you have, you have to be accountable You want because you, you have to be accountable for, for what you're saying. So that's why they want to see the timeline so you could say um immediately i return or upon return or in one year upon return or in six years depending on like what you want depending on the impact you, you, uh, you, you, i don't know if you're uh, if, if i'm making sense depending on the impact it could be something you cannot do immediately return it would be something that you could do immediately return so you want to hold yourself accountable and you want to make them see that you are, you, you are accountable for what you're saying 
So you could say that like in one year after I return, I expect to see a 70% decrease in awareness in the girl child education in so and so region in Nigeria. And then this is also this can also add up to your beneficiaries. If it could be like you your beneficiaries are just girls only, um, your benefic beneficiaries are say like old people, aged people, you could be doing something on aging in in biomedical science, your beneficiaries could just be like aged people alone. And I mean, that's something unique because in UK, yeah, like people, I don't know, like the people uh, were looking for, the UK is, um, um, hospitals, they're looking for caregivers, they're looking for doctors, they're looking for people that, you know, can influence, you know, healthcare, health system. So your, your impact could just be like in aged people, it could be just in women, old women, young women, or it could be for a particular bracket of people, like maybe like adolescent, say like maybe 12 to to X, X year. So like you want to be specific in that area. So depending on what your interest is, find a way to tell this story because all your essays must be like a story. So in the sense that if I just pick your impact and I read it, I can I can say that, oh, this person is an immunologist. Oh, this person is an epidemiologist. Oh, this person um, is going into literacy. Oh, this person is an engineer. You know, something like that. So um, that is the way I would answer this question, basically. In um, I would answer this question, you know, in short story sentences. You know, if I if I want to see, like, it, it, it's not bad if you, if you just have, like, three impacts, three strong impacts, and you're telling them um, exactly um, what you expect to change. Use statistics. If it's 70% increase in that number of years, like be real, be real. Don't say I want to build hospital in immediate return. I want to just build an hospital that will be doing um, um, blood transfusion or that will be doing um, stem cells and regener regenerative therapies. Or I want to build a, uni a university. I want to build a school. It's too big for you to do immediately you return. Set realistic goal. If that is something you can actually do and you can actually prove it, well, that is fine. So, um, of course, don't limit yourself and you want to stay true to yourself. So that is the way I would answer this question, basically. Okay, thank you. Um, um, so we have about 40 minutes more to go. <laughs> okay, you've really spent a lot of time. Um, yeah, so the next question goes to Scholar Hafsat. Um, how the impact of your work could be best measured? Um, yep. Yeah. I think that is one of the essays. Yeah. For this section, I would advise, as Goshen has mentioned earlier, to be consistent. Throughout the Commonwealth essays, try to be consistent. How the, how the impact of your work. The statement said your work, definitely that work, you've mentioned it earlier in your essay. Probably in the first one that said um, your skills or the developmental impact or something. So that work that you mentioned, how do you want it to be measured? Don't go and bring another work from somewhere. Probably initially you said you create an awareness campaign. Maybe you will join a group of organizations to discover to discover a therapeutic approach. So it is that work. Those are the two works you've mentioned earlier. Those are the two works you should talk about here. How they should be measured. Okay. For this one, I would also advise that you add a value. For example, if you've mentioned that you would create an awareness campaign for the best way to measure the impact of a, of a campaign form is through probably a survey form. So you can mention that you would create um, probably a survey form to get feedback from the people and then you will use those responses to improve on that particular project you've done. So this is a way to measure an impact. You've created an awareness, that is the work. So how do you want to know if the work has been useful? How do you can give people questions to answer basic questions, um, give people questions to answer some of the questions that have, um, that aligns with probably what you've taught them, the what the campaign was about and stuff like that. And then you use the responses from that survey 
So that is how this thing can be measured. And then if you've mentioned earlier, like I said that, you don't say you've um, discovered a drug. You can say you want to probably, if you really want to be innovative, you can say you want to discover a therapeutic, a diagnostic tool, a diagnostic approach or something. So a diagnostic approach can still be measured. You know, you've mentioned earlier that you want to um, discover a diagnostic approach. So the best way to measure it is just to validate your approach with probably different clinical samples. So the best method to answer this question here is to reiterate those works you mentioned earlier. Don't mention something new. Try to be consistent and look for a way to measure that particular work, to get feedback from that particular work and how to improve upon the feedback. And always add a value, like Oshin has said, always use statistics. Don't just, don't just say, um, the impact of the impact of something or something make you can see seventy percent of something. Don't just don't be vague. Always add the value. Always put statistics. So that is what I will say about that. Um, thank you, um, scholar Cushion. The next question goes to you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So quickly give us. Um, uh, an overview of uh, a detailed research uh, proposal or proposed study. Oh, sorry. So pro provide a short outline of your proposed study or research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so quickly give us uh, an overview. Okay. Thank you. So, so, so to answer this, I would tell say I would say that you need to check the um, university model again to see um, what you actually did because. You say you're applying for a for a program in biotechnology. You could be writing biotechnology abstractly, and that is not what the school is doing. You know, like biotechnology is wide, and if respect every school has unique uh, modules, they have unique area. Like, and this is very important because I feel like this is one of the things that stood me hard. Because as a biochemist, with my with the knowledge I had, I had about biotechnology in undergrad, I could just write. <laughs> things about biotechnology I want to do, but it's not relating to like the study outline or the program itself. So you would be shooting yourself in the leg if you are not checking the university website. Because obviously people at the department are the one are part of those that are gonna be looking at this of some of some of the essays you are putting forward um to so like if what you're writing is just something they are not doing uh, like it's gonna be like um, it's on off to them. For instance, I'll use myself as, as an example. Before coming to the University of Nottingham, I knew the specific pathway and the specific research I wanna do at the University of Nottingham. Because I checked the University of Nottingham's webpage, I got to know that the biotechnology program at the University of Nottingham is divided into three different research. We have the plant biotechnology, we have the animal biotechnology, and we have the microbial biotechnology. Because I checked the website, I fell in love with the microbial biotechnology because it is leaning towards the therapeutic side. And the kind of skills that it's providing is something that I want to do using cell factories to engineer systems in search of therapeutics, like I've sort of said and all that. And understanding what is going on in vivo, you know, using animal models, sorry, microbial models and all that, like that. Although, like, there's, there's some intersection between different pathways, but then microbial pathway is what I fell in love with, and microbial pathway is what I'm doing right now. So, like, you want to check, you want to check the, sorry, I'm taking your time. So, you want to check the university website and then kind of align the skills that the model is going to give you writing in kind of story to like it could be three, three i don't know i was a word count it could be like four to five um, line of sentence telling the skills telling what you want to address you know what you want the skills and the, and what you want to use the skills to address that you've said above you know you want to stay consistent so this is the way i would answer this particular part check the check the university website the model and I like the skills and I like what you want to address in story. 
Okay, thank you so much for for that. Um, the next essay will be demystified by Scholar Hafsat, and um, the essay is about a detailed plan of your proposed study. So the idea here is that the selection panel will want to understand why you have selected your proposed course and university. This question has um, it has um, like three sub questions under it. And for the first one that says why you have chosen your proposed course, it is majorly the question is majorly asking you for your motivation. Why have you chosen your proposed course? And this motivation usually comes from personal experiences, background, and so on. So you might want to talk about your motivation, why you want to take the particular study. And then if you don't have an experience in that area, for example, those that, are, those that want to change field, you can talk about probably a paper you read and then identify a problem in that paper and tell us what you hope to achieve, what you want to solve. So basically for this question, you need to highlight your motivation, highlight a problem that aligns with the development um, impact or the development team you've selected. And don't forget, be consistent. You've initially mentioned, if you mentioned a disease um, in your development statement, make sure it is the same disease that is mentioned in your motivation here. Don't come and mention another disease yet. Try to be consistent throughout your essays. And then why have you chosen the particular university? In selecting a particular university, I feel it is not only about the university, it is about the program. So you can mention that you've gone through the department webpage and you've, um, you've highlighted some of the faculty's research or you like the put, um, department's research, just like Goshin has said, what attracted him to the particular program. So you need to, you need to like, know why you want to study that particular program, link it with some of the faculty's research, how it aligns with your research interests and the development goals. And you also you can also mention that you want to study in the university. Probably you've checked the alumni records. You, you've seen that the alumni have been accepted into top organizations or institutions worldwide. It means they've been trained to like identify problems and profile solutions. So you can also mention the ranking of the program, the ranking of the university, why you want to study that particular program in the UK, why not in the US? So you can mention some of the benefits of studying in the UK. You can also mention the ranking of the school, like I've said earlier. And then any dissertation topic you have in mind, this is just don't beat around the bush. After mentioning your motivation, your interest, why you want to study in the university, your ranking, the university's ranking, the program ranking and all. Just mention you would like to study this particular topic as your dissertation. Don't, don't no need for story around that part. And then don't bring a dissertation topic from your head. Again, go to the department website, check, look through the research that is being done in that department and then try to identify a problem that aligns with your interest and the, um, the development team and try to form a dissertation topic around that area. So I think that's the best one. Um, thank you. The next um, question here, <laughs> still, still on the essays, right? I think I have about 11 essays or so, as you have said initially. That's a lot of essays. Um, so we have the objectives during the award. Um, so here, the selection panel will want to understand how your proposed study will assist you in your career. Yeah, um, that goes to Scholar Goshen. You're muted. Could you unmute yourself? Okay. Yeah. So, so the next, sorry, I didn't get the prompt. Please, can you repeat? 
Okay, question. yeah. So the question is on the essay about the objectives during the award, right? So say it says the selection panel will want to understand how your proposed study will assist you in your career. Okay, yeah. So like for the objective part, obviously you want to state what you want to gain from the program. So um, you have to make the university website your page. Your 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 you have to fall in love with the university website because you don't want to be writing things that don't relate to what they are doing or don't relate to the skills that they will offer. So most of the UK universities have detailed information about each of the modules, each of the skills that are going to be learned. So you could leverage that to say, I like those skills, make some debate around it, how you want to own those skills. You know, it could be you know, from group discussion, it could be from practicals, it could be from conferences you're going to attend. Um, it could be, and also they want to see um, a whole student. It, it, it must not just be just strictly academics alone. You could also align the fact that you want to meet a particular professor in your department whose interest aligns with yours or something like that. Something very unique. This part would be unique for everybody. It doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be the same skill. Aside research skill for scientists, the skill you, you might be wanting to you might be wanting to own might just be transferable skills, you know, like it might be like just barely communication skills or writing skills that you feel like would be needed for impact. Because at the end of the day, the objective is to impact. Yeah. So uh, um, the skills that you are going to that you want to learn or you want to hone, you want to use it. You want to translate that into um, impact in you know, your space, your interested space and all that. So you want to highlight all this into your essay, into as a story format, as I would say. Um, it could be like in terms of paragraphs and all that, depending on the word counts you have. So this is how I would answer this particular essay. Okay, um, thank you. Um, so the next essay is about your career plans in the five years following the award. Um, so Scholar Hafsat, career plans, I think this is uh, also interchangeably called short-term career goals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it's they're indirectly asking for the short-term career goals, actually. OK. So yeah, mostly when we are writing our essays, the short-term career goal for those interested in the academia should basically be that you would want to pursue a PhD degree after your MSc. But then this is Commonwealth. I wouldn't advise, though it's good to put it that you want to pursue a PhD. That's like a good short-term goal. But I wouldn't advise that you put PhD here for Commonwealth because they are sponsoring you to go back to your own country to make an impact. So I would otherwise advise that you need to like put it there that, okay, after your program, the organizations you've mentioned earlier, again, be consistent. Consistency is the key in this essay. You've mentioned an organization earlier that you would like to collaborate with WHO, UZ and all of that. Mention it here again. What is your short-term goal after your program? After you complete your program on getting to your own country, you would work with these organizations. You can iterate like a problem you would solve in the organization. And I think that's it. Don't mention PhD. Yeah. You need to mention a, like a development impact, the organization you want to work with and what you want to do in that organization. That's all. We can't hear you. I think you are muted. I think you are muted. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah, so no PhD for us. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so the next question, the next essay is the long term career plans. and. That goes to Scholar Goshen. So, so I'm going to balance what my friend said. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna strike a balance to the PhD because I know like a number of people would might be interested in the PhD. What I would say is that um, I know for sure that Commonwealth will not dim your shine. Um, mm. They will not dim your shine if you want to go for a PhD and you feel like um, that is part of your career trajectory. In some part of your essays, you can mention it, stating how obviously how like it's going to benefit because we have it um, obviously you should know by now that commonwealth sponsors the phd program yeah so like who knows the phd might even be you might want to take your phd in the same country you know in nigeria right so like <laughs> uh, so like everybody's experience cannot be the same it's like uh everybody has unique experience so i'm, I'm just going to strike a balance to that so like for the long-term career plan um, let's say, for instance, you stated some, you you said some, you mentioned some NGO like Scholar Hafsa that said you want to stay consistent. Yeah, your short term career plan, when you go back, you, you think the right thing to do is, is to fall back to those organizations, right? Or your NGOs, because um, you are just starting off, right? Um, you start there, you build there, you impact from there, you do all the whole, um, the things you said that you hope to see one year after you return, you say it, you retreat reiterated there that with this organization or with this NGO, I would use this particular skill to do this via this particular conference or workshop, or you want to say, I want to train XYZ number of students so in the area of XYZ um, skill, something like that. And then in your long-term plan, you could be like, oh, now I want to go for a PhD. Nobody's going to dim your shine. Nobody's going to dim your shine. Commonwealth will not penalize you for saying, I, I said, me, I said, I want to go for a PhD in my essay. So that's why I'm saying this. So don't 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 feel um I said it, I want a PhD and I'm getting a PhD by God's grace after my this thing, and I'm gonna impact, right? So it's about striking the balance very well in your essay. They want you to be realistic. That is, I think that is like a very big take home for us. Don't be too greedy. <laughs> <laughs> if I must say, you know, don't be too like, don't be too abstract, you know, saying things that you you do yourself know is not impossible because you just want your essay, your essay to look very, 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 very nice. And you think that they won't see through. They see through lies when you when you when you say things that they know you can't achieve. So um for your long-term plan, start off, you can you can start by saying like the projection, like where you want to be, say you want to be maybe an immunologist. Um, don't say, don't, um, don't say things that you know that are not achievable, right? Okay, let's say you even want to become the president of Nigeria. You have to really, you have to really prove it, you know, from your short-term career plan. Maybe you start off from a particular small group, you go to a political party, you go to this, you go to that, you put it in stratas, then your long term, you can now start t telling, oh, oh, what you want to do. So like, you put in, you can start off with the with the main goal, you know, like for me, the main goal is to become a scientist in my field. Um, so like, obviously, I've been saying things that I want to be doing publication research, um, working in um, some lab, you know, taking some lab positions, I'm not just going to become a biomedical scientist just one day, right? I started off with my BSc, started off with my MSc. I'm going to take some lab positions. I'm going to take some um, lab rotations. Going to do some things in the lab before I finally become the scientist I want to become. So you want to build this from. You want to show a light this from your short term career plan. Then your long term career plan. You can now say from X number of years to so to to Z number of years. I want to achieve this, and then you tell them why you want to achieve this. And then you tell them what you want to change. Perhaps what you want to change, you cannot, you, you don't have, you're not in the right position to change that in the organization you were. But like you are attending this particular position over time. Remember, over time, not immediately. Over time, we put you in the right pedestal to effect this particular change or to carry out this particular research. For instance, if I want to, if I want to discover a drug, for instance, a drug, like after that, I said, I cannot do that now because obviously I know, I don't know, like, in not the, like the techniques or all the techniques I need, you know, to do that. But like over time, I would learn them and then I'll be able to do that, right? So this can even be like, maybe I want to like, for, for, the, for my long-term career plan, I want to work in XYZ, you know, XYZ organization to start 
um, you know, contributing to therapeutic development and all that. That could be like a long-term plan because I've shown that I'm interested in these therapeutics for a long while. So this could be, this is how I would answer it. So um, I would build up on what I've said in my short-term career plan, expand on it, tell them why I want to do this, tell them the change I want to see and why I could not do that in the previous role and what and how this particular role is going to help me to achieve that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so the last two essays we have here are personal statement and the voluntary and leadership experience, which I think um, you kind of, you know, mentioned about in our previous um, conversations. So now I wouldn't want you to draw much on it. Just give us um, some tips, right, to write a good personal statement. Um, while I will leave that of the voluntary and leadership experience to Scholar Goshen. So please, Scholar Hafsat, could you just give us um, some tips? Because I believe there are so many resources online mm -hmm. and even on HISF, there have been so many sessions that have discussed this um, um, SOP, everything, and that of the voluntary and research experience. I'm oh, sorry, voluntary and leadership experience, rather. Yeah, so for the personal statement, could you please give us tips on writing um, personal statements specifically tailored towards um, commonwealth application thank you yeah the personal statement is actually one of the easiest to write out of all the commonwealth essays because this there are so many templates for this and then basically for personal statements for the commonwealth because um the story you've been telling since at the beginning of your essay, this is where to elaborate on everything. In this page, you need to elaborate on your motivation, why you want to carry out that particular program. And then you also need to elaborate on um, how to link the particular program to, to the development team you've selected when you started your application. So, and then the there's a, there's a question in this particular essay that says you should indicate areas in which you have already contributed. So for this section, let's assume you are the type that is interested in a disease and you've not done any voluntary experience or leadership experience because that would have actually been one of the ways you might have contributed. So you can say you've carried out research that aligns with that particular program you want to do and then you can just um, kind of highlight the results and conclusions from that research and tell if it has been published or not. And then there's a particular approach as well. You can also, for example, if um, part of the motivation, if you're a first generation student, like you are the first person to go to UK, to want to study in the UK, in your community, probably a female for those that will be studying courses that tend to gender inequality and all. So this is actually the this is actually good for those kind of people like you can tailor this essay, you can tailor this part to that that you would like to that is like a development impact. You would like to further your studies in the UK in order to pave way for other girls in your community. So these are part of the ways to tackle these questions. And areas you have contributed, you can mention probably um, the diseases you have mentioned earlier, probably poor environment is one of the things that has led to the prevalence of the disease. You can mention some of the communities, um, the, some of the communities work you've done. Probably you are one of those that have gone to sweep the community on one Saturday. You can mention it here. So don't even limit yourself, don't limit your points. Just think about anything at all you've done that, has, that, can, that aligns with that particular development impact you have written at the beginning of your essay. And then in this part is also the part where you might want to demonstrate financial need. Um, the CS is looking for um, academic excellence, leadership, volunteering experience, but then they also want to fund those that are unable to study in the UK. So you might want to also tell a story about how you went out of your way 
to how you struggled to get yourself educated just for the sole purpose of contributing to your own country. You don't necessarily have to mention how your family is poor, how you've been taking Gary and all of that. So you need to tailor it towards that development impact. Like I mentioned earlier, the girl, the first generation female child, you can mention it there. Like this is a way you want to go and study in the UK to pave way for others that are also in the community and also to enlighten your community as well. So that is a development impact. And, and you've also shown in that way that you're unable to afford the education in the UK by not directly mentioning that you are poor or something like that. So I think that's a way. So that's fine. Okay. There are so many things for personal statements. So I've just mentioned some points for common words. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so, Scholar Goshen, within just one minute, could you, I know it will be hard, but please, could you um, tell us about um, the voluntary and leadership experience and how you can come up with something good for that part of the essays? Thank you very much. So, um, for the voluntary part, like, it's an essay, yeah? I think it's 500 words, yeah? So like, it's basically a story of what you've done in this aspect of volunteering, you know, in the area of um, um, your research or interest or any or the development impact as scholars had said. So I would say like, writing your voluntary, your voluntary essay, like use more of hi and less of we, you know, they want to see what you've done and you know, don't be humble. This is not a part, a place to be humble to, um, be saying we, 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 what have you done? How is it measured? What is the impact? You know, use relatable examples, you know, to relatable examples in story, story format. I would always say that in paragraphs to show what you have done. Hi, I did this. I contributed to this. I assisted. Even if you are not the team lead, even if you are not the founder, what did you do and what was the impact? That would be my two cents for the voluntary uh, essay part. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, our speakers today for you know the wonderful and amazing um, exposition and come here to share their knowledge with us so that we can also go and meet them in the UK. Yes. Yeah. Um, so now we will be taking the questions. Um, yeah. So the first question I'm seeing here is from. I'm sorry, but I can only pronounce organic. Um, please, I have a question. Is PhD program for Commonwealth Shared Scholarship? So no, um, PhD is not for Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. It's basically MSc for Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, but we have PhD Commonwealth. We have split sites, PhD Commonwealth. Oh. Okay, so that the PhD Commonwealth has a separate application. Yes. Okay. I hope the, uh, uh, the, the the person who asked the question is listening. Um, so the next question here is the great J. I hope you're still around. He says, please, can I get an MSc program as scholarship? I want to study psychology. I'm not sure <sighs> meaning, but um, the idea here is that the Commonwealth Share Scholarship is for a master's program and the programs um, that are sponsored by the Commonwealth Shared um, Scheme, right? There is a list of programs that is sponsored every year. Um, so if psychology is part of the program, I think um, you would be eligible to apply um, if you meet other requirements as well. Um, so hello, scholars. I want to ask what you think um, as a criteria gave you an edge over other applicants um i believe they've mentioned some of the tech, um you know the tips right that um they uh, use during the application process ranging from um the essays you know to how you choose schools don't focus on the top schools try to spread your options so that you have you know enough chances across broad um yeah um says and also I think this is Jean Claude. Um, also, I wonder how the nominating university selects students and also Commonwealth through final selection. I'm a bit confused. 
I think you've also said something about it, but could you just, in just like 15 seconds, could you just tell us um, the nomination of uh, the nomination by the university and the nomination by the Commonwealth Shared Scheme? So, well, so the, way I see, I, I, the way I see it, as I said, like it's based on my experience, like the university, the nominating university, the university you're applying to has the like greater share. Once they nominate you, you get in it. Commonwealth will always approve it. Yeah. And just to add, for the person that asked about the psychology thing, um, okay. you might not see psychology exactly on the portal, but you would see something related like mental health or something like that, and you can choose for that. Okay. Don't, just, don't just look for psychology. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah, I also, um, I also okay. excuse me, I also want to add that before you make your commonwealth application. Try to check the school's requirements. If you know you don't meet the school requirements, don't bother to make the scholarship application because Commonwealth will send your application to the school and then the school will select you. So if you do not even meet the um, the admission requirements, there's no way you can even be nominated for the scholarship. So do your research on this program you want to apply to. Okay, that's nice. Um... Another question here by Mazira, she says, can one apply for the same program in more than one school under the same development goal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's that's possible. Um, so the next question says, do I have to gain admission first before applying to com for Commonwealth Scholarship? No. no. Okay, no. Um, for more clarification on that, I would suggest that the person who asked this question, I think this is Rahmatullah Babalala, um, you kind of listen to the um, session from the beginning. I think you will get a more clearer um, perspective to your question. Um, Umar says, a school in the UK gave me admission three days after applying, and it gave me deadline of December 29 to make some payments. And I indicated CSS in the funding section. Do I need to send them an email? Well, um, I think this person has applied, and I think the school is asking them to pay something. And well, I would I advise the know. person to check the school um, requirements. There are some schools, like Goshin has said, the University of Chester, that would want you to apply for the Commonwealth Scholarship. The, and the deadline for the admission, if you'll be applying for the scholarship, it has to be the deadline for the scholarship as well. So I would advise the person to check the, first of all, if that program is among the um, programs, Commonwealth Shared Scholarship would be sponsoring. And then the person should also check the requirements. This is the deadline. So if, if the program is part of the Commonwealth Scholarship programs, the person can mail the school, probably send the application documents as like an evidence that I've applied to this scholarship and I'm waiting for response. Oh, okay. That's nice. Um, so another question here, must you have an international passport first before applying to UK schools? Um, What's your answer to that? Is it yes or no? No, I think once again, the person should make his or her research. Some schools would require okay. you to have an international passport, while some schools would only require you to have um, just your NIN. And then for Commonwealth, I know of someone that also applied with NIN. The person did not apply with passports. So I would say for Commonwealth, if you don't have your passport, you can use your NIN to apply, your national ID card to apply. But for the schools, I would advise to check for the program requirements. Okay, but thank you. Just to um, add, okay. person should start. Sorry, just to add, person should start making plans for getting the passport because that is one of the first thing you need to get. Mm -hmm. You know, because obviously okay. you get you go you be going and you need the passport. So. Okay. All right, so um, I think Goshen has a fan here. Um, there is another question. Can you apply for more than one course in the same institution? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, okay, I think this question has been answered already. Will we'll one apply for admission first or scholarship? Um, 
this person should uh, watch the session again to find a question there um the answers to your question um is it advisable to apply to different schools for commonwealth scholarship i think the answer is yes right yeah as you have so it's rightly it's said so it's not, applications, not shabby application you can apply to 10 and get zero nomination because your applications yeah. are okay okay yeah so whichever schools whichever i mean whatever the number of schools you want to apply to just make sure you throw in you know a very strong um, application um saying are we to write the whole essay yeah i mean <laughs> you are yeah, you, you you're going to get the scholarship right so you have to put in the work um <laughs> how many are we to submit <laughs> uh, i think there are about 11 as you have said i mean this would be in um in the application portal or maybe a file that you download so you see there yeah uh, so another question here is is there interview for the scholarship okay no. let me check this so like um it depends on the school that is nominating you i know that because i was saving for my experience because i always use my experience so I applied to Brunner University and Brunner University interviewed me, but I didn't go with them anyway. So some universities, just a few of them, as I've said, there's always an outlier. Just a few universities would interview you, but a number of them will not interview you. My school year didn't interview me. Okay. I think um, for the for the um, program application, not the Commonwealth application. Commonwealth scholarship do yeah. not have interviews. Yeah. So okay. so the, yeah. So the thing is, um, after so the thing is how it is right for when you apply for admission many a times they, 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 um, it, i think it's subjective they might be they might not be but i didn't do any interview for my admission basically but for common world mm -hmm. brunner university just chose to do interview this for this particular mm -hmm. part it's supposed to be an outlier so i think things are changing now. <laughs> things some schools are changing like they do interview but it's nothing serious still okay yeah so so i think there's an answer from scholar with one here so i think the standard protocol is no interview but you know some schools are deviating mm -hmm. from from that um, okay standard okay um yeah can we have the yeah sure you can come to hisf uh, um, youtube platform at any time to uh, watch the um, session over again um must someone have submitted applications to school before application end for css um again this question has been answered uh, please go through the session again you will find your the answer to this particular question um so there's another which comes first goshen um, please do just oh okay i think this is the same question this is the same question um i'm sure the person must have this question has been asked for over an hour now i think about an hour so the person must have um saying the answers or harsh the answers to to this question um about the referees must our referees be academic referees well it's advisable to use at least one of them academic or two of them academic and maybe one your professional but if you can get academic fine i i always like academic because it's an academic scholarship right like so like you want to get like at least one or two of them you know um at least if you can get academic referees, yeah, please do. Please do. Like, because, like, Commonwealth is Commonwealth. So I don't know if Hafsa wants to say something else. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, that is one of the advantage Commonwealth Share Scholarship has over the Commonwealth Master's Scholarship. When you are making your application, you only need to impute the names of the referees. So once Commonwealth contacts you for your referee details, for your references, just know that you you are already in, but but then you might want to put academic references. You can combine it with professional references or references from your you know, probably your boss from an NGO or something like that. It's common well shared. So once they request for the references, you are already in. Well, the catch is that you should have like an official ID not a yes. gmail or yahoo as a catch mm. but okay. it will bounce the, the mm. information will bounce back if it's not like official it won't even deliver i think so, so oh. wow. Mm. wow yeah um so please side the essays what are the doc okay um the list 
um, the documents are required of you know the, the, the scholars have you know expatiated on uh, on this please watch the session again thank you um can a finalist without gre and TOEFL apply still apply for this year's csc for this common words program i think this has also been also been attended to um so um, I think the schools, according to what scholars have said, not all of them request um, the TOEFL, the English language proficiency. Some may request you to submit that, but you can submit your um, uh, um, a, a letter from your institution stating that your undergraduate degree was taught and assessed in, in English language. Um, yeah. So I think that's also for GRE. I think this is specific to to the course you're applying to. So again, do your research um, and check if your program um, requires you to submit to GRE or TOEFL. Uh, okay. So under the development impact session, the CSC there is an option to input application. Oh. Okay, I think these are specific questions that requires, you know, you speaking to the scholars um, in, in person, if, if that is okay. Um, I would suggest if, uh, if it is possible to reach out to them on LinkedIn with their permission, you know, you can reach out to them on LinkedIn, you know, for questions about the, um, the Commonwealth Share Scholarship. And I think the ISI, oh, sorry, ISI, sorry about that. <laughs> the HISF, H, I'm also an ISI scholar, so yeah. <laughs> the HISF um, uh, platform <laughs> is there. I think there is a new WhatsApp um, community where we have a lot of people who can answer your questions. And um, also, I think there's a way you can comment on each video here where the, um, you know, studio coordinator can also provide answers to your questions. Um, yeah, so with this, I would like to really appreciate uh, our scholars for, you know, gracing um, uh, this event with their uh, presence and um, sharing their knowledge uh, to help the prospective um, scholars in, in um, um, their journey to also become, you know, a scholar, a bona fide scholar. Um, yeah, um, the studio coordinator, any, any mm. comments before mm. the session ends? Uh, thank you very much for the great work, sir. You are very grateful for your kind support. We are both member of HISF and also high scholar. So thank you, oh. scholar. <laughs> Everybody in your high class. <laughs> Wow. Huh? Shout out to Shout out to ISI. ISI is a great one. So, thanks nice. to Scholar Goshen and Scholar Afsas. I wish you best of luck in your studies. As always, I will see you in UK soon. So, <laughs> you know, kind listener, please try to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Oxports ISF. Please kindly subscribe, like, follow, and comment. So we are going to bring another update to you soon now. So thank you very much. So thank you, Scholar Mutalib, Scholar Afsat, and Scholar Gushen. So see you soon now. I'm going to end the section right now. Ciao. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.